Welcome back to my channel, YouTube viewers. Sweet Tips here. Got a uh, crucible full of carrot gold here. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, I've got the amounts recorded right here. Got 162.6 grams of 14K, 24.4 grams of 10K. It's in this crucible right here. We're going to melt this up and add some silver to encourt this carrot gold with silver. Okay, the magic numbers for our carrot scrap being quartered with gold, we got 162.6 grams of 14k we need to multiply this by 1.265 times 1.265 equals that tells us we need 205 rounded up to 206 grams of sterling silver for 10K, we multiply that, the number of grams of 10K that we got, by 0.635. That's the magic number. So we got 24.4 multiplied by 0.635. And we get 15.5 five grams of sterling silver 15.5 so we need a total of 15.5 plus 206 i need 221.5 grams of sterling 925 so right, we need 221.5 grams of sterling got some sterling silver forks here on the back it will say sterling. It doesn't say sterling on the back of the fork. It's probably not sterling silver. If it doesn't have that mark, then it's probably a plate of silver over brass or copper. We need 221.5 grams of silver to add to our gold. Why is he adding silver to the gold? Why is he doing that? Don't make sense. That's what people will say. I see it over and over. And the reason I'm adding silver to the gold here is a refining technique. Here's 220.3. That'll be fine. That's how much we're going to add. This is a refining technique called inquartation, where we make an alloy of gold that is 25% gold. And 75% base metals and silver. So we're going to add this silver to the gold now and import the carrot gold with our sterling silver. All right, let me be clear here. I'm adding sterling silver to the carrot scrap to reduce the concentration of gold in the alloy. As long as that gold is up around 10 carat or 14 carat, that concentration of gold will resist the nitric acid treatments that I'm going to do in the next step. So by adding this silver and reducing the gold concentration to down around 25%, then and only then will I be able to uh, remove all the silver that I'm adding here plus any silver and base metals that was already alloyed with the carrot gold all of that will be able to uh, will be able to re extract all of that now that I've reduced the carrot of the gold down by adding this silver if I tried to put the carrot gold straight in nitric acid it would not react it would do nothing the carrot of the gold is too high 
for us to be able to uh, extract the metals with hot nitrate treatments, uh, we first have to reduce the carrot of the gold down to 6K or 25% by adding sterling silver. I'll get back every bit of the silver that I added for this inquartation process, plus any silver that was already alloyed in the carrot scrap. I'll get all of that back when I do the nitric acid treatments in the next step. Here I'm adding some borax. That was an unclean crucible that I selected. Uh, it was a larger crucible than the standard size that I have in my collection there. So I used that because I knew it was going to be a large amount of metal. But there was some trash that was floating around on top of the metal. So I added a little bit of borax. The borax will melt and absorb that junk that's floating around on top of the metal and pull it to the side of the melt dish so that when I go to pour it in the water in the next step, I won't have a bunch of junk pouring over with the 25% gold alloy. All right, here we go. We're gonna pour this in water now and uh, make some uniform sized pieces so that we can do the nitric acid treatments in the next step. Notice here that I'm trying to pour the molten metal over bare spots in the bottom of the dish if I pour the molten metal on top of the metal that I've already poured in, it will tend to weld together. The metal tended to clump up a little bit and stick together, but the bond's not strong. I can pull that apart easily. I do have a rig where I can pour the metal and bounce it off of a wooden board and form smaller granules but I didn't set it up for this small amount of uh, metal that I was pouring here. Here's our uh, imported gold. This stuff really does look really neat. I mean, it's got a, uh, a certain look that I can't quite describe. When we alloy it with that sterling silver, this is gonna be 25% pure gold and 75% base metals and silver. And I'm thinking about using this alloy right here uh, to make my chest set with in quartered gold, 6K gold. Uh, this is pure silver crystal and I'll use this probably to make the opposing chest pieces out of it's about five nines fine pure silver crystal uh but i don't want to use pure silver crystal to incorporate my gold with because this has already been through the silver cell what i want to use to incorporate my gold with is sterling silver scrap pieces of sterling silver like this right here or sterling silver flatware and the reason is because i refine silver also the first step in refining silver is to dissolve the sterling silver in nitric acid so the logical thing to do here is use sterling silver to incorporate the gold since i'll be using nitric acid to pull it back out in this step essentially refining both metals at the same time after we've added additional silver to this to get the uh, gold content down to around 25 percent or 6k then and only then will we be able to successfully use nitric acid to get all of the silver that we added plus all of the copper and silver and zinc that was already in the 14k scrap it will come out too in fact after i get done with these nitric acid treatments this gold will be very very close to three nines fine just like it is without any further refining required that's how good 
Let me see if I can break this without. All right. That's how good encording and parting with nitric acid is at cleaning this gold. It's just incredible. But it's counterintuitive because people are going, why is he adding sterling silver to that gold? Yeah, I'm just going to add it. That's just a little bit of borax that came over when I encorded the gold. Now what we're going to do is rinse the gold off with distilled water. The tap water I used in here has chlorine in it. And if we leave the uh, chlorinated tap water on our gold, when we add the nitric acid to this, the chlorinated tap water will combine with the resulting silver nitrate that we get by adding the nitric acid and form silver chloride and gum up the works. We want to avoid that. So I'm rinsing all the tap water off here with some distilled water. And here is our imported gold. We've got our imported gold in this big two liter beaker. We've got some nitric acid, dilute nitric acid that was used in a previous refining. So that's what this is. This is dilute, used dilute nitric acid going in to the imported gold here. You'll see it begins reacting immediately. Back here I've got a uh, beaker that had some carrot gold residual particles in it. And I just put a little aqua regia in there and I'm boiling that out to get the gold out of there. What we're gonna do now, I've got the heat set on medium high over here. Put this up on the heat. And we're gonna let this react back here now. This is time-lapse footage, speeded up about four times. The nitric acid is dissolving out all the silver and base metals, but it won't dissolve the gold. The gold will get left behind as a brown solid. This is the benefit of encording and parting with nitric acid. All right, I've got some uh, filter papers here. 12.5 centimeter Buckner funnel. It's got a little gasket down here that forms a seal between the funnel and the filter flask. What I'm gonna do is add a filter paper now. And uh, wet it with some distilled water. And now, once we get a seal to form here, I can tell when I got a good seal when I pull up on this and it doesn't release. And now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna filter out this silver here. This is a silver solution from my gold refining. And we're gonna pour it through this filter. This, is, this solution has been allowed to set on the silver. All of the free nitric that was in here is gone now because it's reactive with all the silver and I've got the most efficient use of the nitric acid I've got my silver solution being pulled through this filter I've made room inside of my silver jar now it's got a bunch of silver in it. That's sterling silver that I've incinerated and added to this jar. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour this silver solution off now, but there will be a little bit of free nitric in this solution that I'm pouring off. And I wanna consume that with the silver that's in the jar. look at this you'll see crystals of silver nitrate forming that solution is nearly saturated with silver and uh, as the beaker cools off 
the crystals come out of solution and form on the side of the beaker. This is easily remedied. I just add some distilled water here. It dissolves everything. But what I'm trying to do is remove the silver from the gold. So I want to rinse this out real good with uh, distilled water to get all of that silver out of the gold. I add it to this silver jar here. We want to keep it, it's valuable. It's got silver in it, might have some palladium in it or other platinum group metals. And when I uh, when I get this jar completed, or when I get the jar full, I want to make sure that there's some additional silver left in this at all times, and that will ensure that I'm getting all the nitric out of there. Now I'm going to add some used nitric acid the imported gold back here. And we're going to continue to uh, remove the silver and base metals out of here with this uh, used nitric acid. This is the solution in this jar and what we're going to do is take this solution now and I add it to a beaker that's full of copper and the uh, silver will come out of solution on that copper and the platinum group metals that's in there with the silver solution in here will also cement out on the copper in my beaker over there and then once I accumulate uh, enough silver in the bottom of the beakers, I get it out of there and I melt it up into shot like this. And I use this as feedstock for the silver cell. I've got all my silver solution pulled down through the filter now. What we'll do, get this out of the way. Just set it out of the way for right now. That'll be added to a beaker with some copper in it. And uh, this is our second hot dilute nitric treatment here. We're going to pour this second hot dilute nitric treatment off now. We're going to add the solution to our silver jar. Still got some silver left in it. Rinse this out now and add some more dilute nitric acid to our gold. silver jar that's quite all right I'll recover that later on now what we're gonna do is I've got another jar here of dilute nitric acid used dilute nitric acid we're gonna add this to the gold do a third dilute nitric treatment Beaker here. This is number three. Cover this up. We'll put it back up 
on the heat now and let that continue to dissolve. All right, this is nitric acid boil number three. We're gonna pour this off and do another one. We're all out of the used nitric acid now from previous refinings. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add fresh nitric acid. If you look in there, I don't know if you can see that. As I pour that in, there's plenty of free nitric acid in here. Here's what our gold looks like. Looking pretty good. We've still got metals that are coming out of solution there on the side of the beaker as it evaporates away. So we're gonna have to do some more nitric oils here to get all of the silver and base metals out of here. Nice thing about this is we've got a fantastic color indicator that tells us when the reaction is done. Uh, when this solution stays perfectly clear, and it's a pretty safe bet to conclude that we've got all of the base metals and silver removed. Stick this back up on the heat now. I'm gonna add some distilled water to it. That's about a little over just above the 200 milliliter level there. And now what we'll do is put some nitric in here. And this will be nitric acid oil. Number four, dilute nitric acid oil number four. Check this thing out and see where we're at with this. This is the uh, trimmed fingers. You should never pick a beaker up by the rim like that. Ever. bubbler back in here covered up and just let this continue to to go here uh, you'll notice here that the uh, last nitric acid boil that we've poured off is reacting fairly vigorously here in our uh, silver jar so what I'm gonna have to do is will probably dissolve all the silver that's in there to burn some more silver add it to the silver jar so that when I pour off the dilute nitric into here it will be consumed by the additional silver that I add to my silver jar I've got some silver here what we'll do is heat it up to burn off any oils or grease and then I'm going to add it to my silver jar You'll notice here that I'm getting flames and smoke 
coming off that silver as I burn it. That's the reason we're uh, burning this silver is to get any combustible material off before I add it to that acidic solution in my silver jar. And uh, it's important to realize here that what I'm doing is essentially refining gold and silver at the same time in that I'm using the silver to import the gold that's in that beaker up there boiling and then I'm extracting the silver back out with the nitric acid boils and then I pour it off into my silver jar there and uh, consume every bit of excess nitric acid that may be in the solution in the blue liquid that's boiling up there on the heat. So this is refining gold and silver at the same time. Okay, now we're gonna add the uh, nitric, the spent nitric acid from this solution to our uh, silver here. You get a pretty decent reaction when it hits it. See that? You want to be careful adding this much hot nitric in there so that I don't uh, cause it to start to boil over. If I had a lot of silver in there, I would not be pouring in this much concentrated nitric. This will burn that uh, little bit of silver up right away. Now what we're going to do is uh, rinse the uh, gold off with some water. these nitric acid treatments are completely colorless and uh, when they're completely colorless I'm talking about the solution when it's completely colorless I can uh, conclude that all of the silver and base metals has been removed from it set this back up on our uh, heat up here and let that continue to boil we started on this about 7 30 this morning it's about 2 30 in the afternoon right now so we'll just continue to let this boil now and react i think that acid's already consumed all of the silver that we've already added so i'll have to burn some more silver and add it to our silver jar please notice that the uh, metal band on this thing came off. It's held together with a steel screw and it broke and came off of there. So not a good idea to use these for extended periods of time. Uh, the metal will break off. So, but I can still use the pot like a beaker. This has been on boiling now for about 45 minutes. What we're gonna do is uh, empty the solution out of our beaker back here uh, into this container that I've got set aside down here and what this is is we'll save this for the next refining that we do this off 
boiling nitric acid. I'm going to save it and we'll use it again next time we do a refining. When we do the first nitric treatment, we'll use this solution that I'm pouring off into this bottle right now. The light blue color of that solution tells me that most of the silver and base metals are gone but it also tells me that I need to do another dilute nitric acid treatment on the gold. Rinse out the gold with some distilled water. Rinse the gold, there's our gold, nice brown color. Rinse this off with a couple of douses of distilled water and then I pour that off into my silver jar just in case there's any silver in there. It shouldn't be but pour it off in the silver jar so we can recapture this rinse water cover any precious metals that it might contain. Alright, I think that'll do it. I'm going to put it up on the heat here and what we'll do now is we'll add another dose of dilute nitric acid it's distilled water to about the 200 milliliter level and then we're going to add some nitric acid and let this boil until our solution is completely colorless not wasting this acid this acid will be reused the next time we do a refining all right that was acid treatment number five the one we just poured in is treatment number six this should do it this should be the last one this is nitrate treatment number five that we just poured off and I got number six in there right now. I'm gonna go until it's colorless. In the meantime, I'm gonna run up to the post office and ship a package for my good friends, Mark and Carla. Thanks to those folks. And now when we get back, we'll uh, resume the refining. This is our sixth nitric boil. You can see there the solution's fairly clear. It's actually taken on a little bit of a yellow color because nitric acid, although we, most folks don't realize it, is somewhat soluble in nit or, uh, gold is somewhat soluble in nitric acid. Uh, nitric acid will dissolve gold a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So if you, if you left this boil for several hours, your uh, nitric acid will start getting more and more yellow colored as it uh, dissolves a little bit more gold. Just like it is we could melt that up and uh, use that for new alloys no further refining is required that would be very close to three nines fine just like it is judging by the color of that solution that we just poured off this uh, gold right here 
be very clean. I'm gonna add hydrochloric acid now. And what we're gonna do is uh, slowly dissolve this gold. If I did a good job of getting all the silver out, you won't see a bunch of silver chloride form when I pour this in. Here we go. And I didn't see a whole lot of silver chloride. Notice that it reacts immediately. That's from the residual nitric acid that's left in the gold. Got some sulfuric acid here. I'm gonna add about a half a milliliter to precipitate out any lead that might be present. We're gonna stick this up on the heat. And we're gonna slowly start adding small doses of nitric acid to form aqua regia and dissolve the gold. Here I'm adding about 30 milliliters of nitric acid to the gold and hydrochloric acid in that beaker. That should be enough to just dissolve the gold. Pre-mixing aqua regia 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 is an antiquated refining technique. Instead, we use this method, incremental nitric acid dosing. We can carefully control the amount of nitric acid going into the reaction, and then there won't be any excess nitric to remove before we do the precipitation. I can't overemphasize how important it is to use incremental nitric acid dosing here rather than pre-mixing the aqua regia 3 to 1 or 4 to 1. Pre-mixing aqua regia is an antiquated refining technique that just isn't used by refiners anymore. If we do, then we're guaranteed to have a whole bunch of excess nitric acid in our solution that must be removed before we precipitate the gold. With incremental dosing, there won't be any excess nitric to remove. Got about 30 milliliters of nitric in there. Let's take a look at this and see if we've got it dissolved yet. Just about, look at that, man. We just got a few crumbs down there. So, uh, I think, Try and add just a uh, a drop or so of nitric acid. See what happens here. Just a drop. I've got about a quarter of a milliliter of nitric. I'm gonna drop it down here on the uh, crumbs of gold that's remaining. Get the rest of that gold to go into solution. If you remember earlier in the video, I had a little bit of a few pure gold particles down in the bottom of this beaker, and I dissolved it with a little bit of aqua regia to get it out of this beaker. So this will have a little bit of free nitric in it also. I'm gonna add it slow because it's real hot. See if we can uh, get the rest of the gold in here to dissolve. And we're going to form another function in that we'll be able to get this gold out of this beaker so I can uh, start using it again. Okay, everything's gone into solution now. I'm gonna pull it down off the heat. And we're gonna set here and let it cool down. I've allowed my gold solution to cool completely. I've added a filter to my filter flask here. And I've dampened it with some distilled water. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, 
filter the solution into this flask. Here we go. Notice in the bottom of the beaker we've got a little bit of solids. That's uh, probably some silver chloride. Silver chloride is a very fine particulate. And a little bit of it probably will pull through the funnel. Or through the filter, rather. Got everything pulled through the filter now. I'm going to rinse all the color out of the filter. And then we're going to transfer the solution and precipitate the gold. I'm going to take this beaker in, clean it out real good. Got the filter rinsed out. It's a shot of the solids in there. What I'll do is I'll save that my paper storage and we cover any precious metals that it might contain later on now what we'll do I'll get this filter up out of the way just set it up here I get a beaker out of the way here's our uh, gold solution and what we're going to do now is transfer it into the same beaker that we used to refine it in. I've got some ice cubes in there. Those ice cubes are made out of tap water. Contamination in tap water is measured in parts per million. And there's not enough contamination in there to affect the assay on our gold. I'm expecting... 104 grams of gold from this lot. 100 grams, 104 grams of pure gold. That's a little over three troy ounces. And whenever I have that much gold to precipitate, I always add some ice cubes because when we add the sodium metabisulfite, it will create some heat. So in order and interfere with the precipitation heat will interfere with the precipitation so I always add some ice when I have two or more troy ounces of gold that I'm precipitating out and now what we'll do is I'm going to add sodium metabisulfite this is stump out by bonide it is sodium metabisulfite and we're going to add this I got this at Ace Hardware by the way and we're going to add some sodium metabisulfite now and precipitate out our pure gold here we go The gold comes down immediately as soon as that sodium metabisulfite hits the acidic chloroauric acid solution. Uh, it turns to SO2 gas in there, and it's the SO2 gas that uh, causes the gold to come out of solution. 
uh, I suppose that there is a stoichiometric amount of sodium metabisulfite that should be added here. But I usually end up just adding spoon after spoon until I see a uh, pale uh, whitish color and some white foam forming on top of the solution. And that's how I can tell when I've got all the gold precipitated out of my solution. Here we can tell a little about the purity by the color and clarity of the liquid setting on top of the gold and by how quickly and cleanly that it settles out. Here's our beautiful pure gold powder. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got a uh, a temporary storage container for the waste and what I'm gonna do is pour off the waste solution in our beaker sitting on top of the gold into this temporary waste container and then once I get it poured off I'm gonna do multiple rinses with hydrochloric acid to rinse any dissolved metals off of our pure gold powder in this beaker. I'm rinsing over and over with hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid does a better job of rinsing dissolved metals out of the gold powder than just plain water would do. The gold settles quickly and the color is exquisite light brown caramel color that's another indication that we've got high purity gold here I've got the uh, solution down there pretty much crystal clear so I'm gonna pour this last uh, rinse off into my waste container and then next what we'll do we rinse the uh, sides down here see hydrochloric acid does a much better job of rinsing any dissolved metals that might be in there with our gold powder it does a better job than just plain water does so that's why we uh, rinse it with hydrochloric acid I'm gonna rinse it with some water And then what we're going to do is uh, commence a second refining. That's our pure gold powder, man. That just looks absolutely gorgeous, just like it is. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some more hydrochloric acid here out to about the 300 milliliter level or so. That's closer to 400 milliliters. And now I'm gonna add another squirt of sulfuric acid. Shouldn't be any lead in here at all, but this is just a precautionary thing here. We add some anyway, it doesn't hurt a thing. And it does provide a benefit in that if there is any acid or it is any lead in here, it will react with that nitric acid warm silver sulfate we, we can uh, filter it all out then set it up on the heat up here this second refining will clean the gold up real nice if you remember from the first refining we uh, added about 30 milliliters of nitric acid 
and there was probably some residual nitric acid in there as well from the nitric acid treatments so here I'm going to add about uh, 40 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid and uh, this should uh, get pretty close to where we need to be as far as dissolving all the gold I got about well, there's actually about 30 milliliters of nitric in here and about 400 milliliters of hydrochloric so we're going to add this right on in should start reacting immediately it's cold so it won't uh, take off on us and boil over we'd never add that much nitric if we had our solution already heating up This is time lapse and speed it up four times normal speed. You'll see I'll shoot a couple more squirts of nitric in there. And if you look down at the bottom, you'll see the uh, gold powder has just about completely dissolved already. This is about 15 minutes of footage condensed into this uh, short clip here. This has been on the heat now for about 15 minutes or so, maybe 20. And if you look down in there, we've got just a few little bitty crumbs of gold left in the bottom of that solution. So I'm just gonna leave it on the heat. I think there's enough nitric in there to uh, dissolve the rest of those crumbs of gold. I'm gonna leave this on here for about another five minutes. We'll come back and check it. And I'm thinking by then, all of the gold will have gone into solution. As I suspected, every bit of the gold has gone into solution now. We've got a nice, clean, clear, and bright chloral auric acid solution. And uh, this is going to make some nice, high purity gold. The solution has been allowed to cool to very near ambient temperature. I'm gonna add a few ice cubes to uh, get it even colder. The solution's been cooled, chilled down to a, about the temperature of a cold drink with ice in it. Now what we're gonna do is pour it through this filter and filter out any solids. There shouldn't be anything in here, man. This is, this solution is crystal clear. Should pass through this funnel with no restriction at all. And we'll end up with a bright, clear, orange solution down here in our flask. zero sediment in our filter and the solution down here is clear and bright this is a indication that we're going to get some high purity gold when we precipitate all right that took about a minute and a half to pull through the filter yet another indication that we've got some high purity gold here okay I'm gonna remove the funnel I'll save that filter it may have traces of gold in it now what we're gonna do is See if we can get this out of the way without making a big mess here. And we're going to put our solution in this beaker here. I'm going to pour it right in over some ice. Again, the ice is made out of tap water. Contaminants in that tap water is measured in parts per million. 
not enough to register or report any precious metals assay. Okay, we're gonna precipitate with sodium metal bisulfite a second time. Here we go. Sodium metal bisulfite going in right now. All right, since 2010, I've probably refined close to 1,000 troy ounces of pure gold. And based on my experience, when I do this precipitation with the sodium metabisulfite, it takes about nine or 10 spoons of the sodium metabisulfite to get all that gold to come out of solution. When I start seeing that white foam forming on top of the solution, I know that I'm getting close to being at the end of the precipitation. Another aspect to consider is the color of the gold powder that's precipitated out of the solution. A very light caramel brown color uh, indicates that we've got a, a high purity gold precipitation here. Also, the speed at which it settles out and the color and clarity of the liquid on top of the settled gold. And here you can see it's nearly colorless. Uh, this is another indication that we've got high purity gold in the bottom of that beaker. Here's a look at our pure gold powder. It's absolutely beautiful. Nice caramel brown color. What I'm going to do now is we're going to pour this off into a uh, waste container here. I'll set this in the back. And we're going to pour off the waste solution off, sitting on top of the gold right there into that waste container in the back and then I'm going to give it some rinses with hydrochloric acid get all the chemicals rinsed off of it pure gold powder looking real good I miscalculated the amount of room that I'll need inside that flask to do the rinses and pouring it off into that flask so I had to bring down my big 10 liter temporary storage container Here I'm doing multiple rinses with hydrochloric acid and distilled water to get all the chemicals rinsed off of there before I uh, put it in a melt dish. Uh, there's no dissolved metal in there with it. You've seen the crystal clear waste solution that was on top of the gold after we got done with the precipitation. And I can recover any gold that gets poured over into that waste container later on. I've got my mask on and uh, my face shield in preparation for the melt here. So we're gonna try to talk you through this as we go. I prepared a brand new melt dish and I've got the gold in the melt dish now and I'm gonna transfer it over onto the melt table and we'll put a torch on it and start doing the melt. I've been having a problem with the uh, molten metal absorbing gas and then uh, spitting it out. It appears to bubble and boil while it's in the melt dish. And so I turn the flame down 
and this melt took a total of 10 minutes uh, to get it to go molten completely. Okay, coming up here in a second, you'll see uh, there's a real nice shot of the pour. You can see the metal exiting the uh, crucible and going into the mold. I set the crucible on the edge of the mold and just kind of roll the metal in. And it rolls in real nice, just like that. Not many people get to see gold this pure. It's just absolutely gorgeous. There's something about pure gold that just captures one's imagination. If you look at it, this uh, bar came out looking like butter. The surface is a mirror finish. It's just absolutely mesmerizing. Here's our bar of pure gold, absolutely beautiful. The surface is flawless, mirror finish. The shape of the bar isn't quite as good as my last one that I did. And, uh, but this is, oh, this is a nice bar of absolutely pure gold. Just absolutely beautiful. Let's see what we weigh in at. I was expecting 104, and I got 101.8. That's about right, because carrot scrap is never, ever plum. So now we're going to stamp this up and uh, offer it for sale. Let's see what the uh, troy ounces is on this. That's 3.2 troy ounces of pure gold. And we'll be offering this for sale on my uh, Here's our finished bar, absolutely beautiful, mirror finish. I've got it stamped three tips, 999 fine gold, and 3.2 troy ounces, OZT for troy ounces. This thing is just beautiful. I'm gonna set it up here on the scale, verify our weight. 3.275 so it's almost 3.3 so it's a little over that's better than being a little under all right we're going to offer this one for sale i want to uh i want to get 2050 spot gold for this so that's going to be so what? we got 3.2 times 2050 this will be going for 65.60 and we'll do a wire transfer or a uh, cashier's check
this will conclude the video I got a nice 3.2 tray ounce bar here I'm gonna be offering that for sale if anybody's interested in buying this you can now uh, click on the about in my on my channel there and you'll find my email sweet tips refining at gmail and uh, just email me and let me know if you're interested in it it'll be uh, priced at uh, a spot price of two thousand fifty dollars I know that's not the current spot price and please don't be upset because I'm asking a premium on this if it bothers you that I'm doing that just don't bid and uh, feel free to pass on it and uh, that'll conclude the video I believe thanks for watching